President, I ask unanimous consent to speak as if in morning hour. Without objection. Mr. President, all of us, every member of the United States Senate, all 100 of us, whether we are Republicans or Democrats, we ought to want the United States Senate to function. We ought to want the United States Senate to be able to accomplish its work. This is a, been a, it's a challenge all the time, but learning what transpired this morning on the Senate floor, in my view, reaches another low for the United States Senate. Hard, I suppose, to explain, but it takes unanimous consent for committees to meet while the United States Senate is in session. And that's a request that's made on an ongoing basis uh, when the Senate uh, convenes, and it happened again this morning. And almost without exception, it's routine. The rules require that two hours after the United States Senate convened, which we did at 9.30 this morning, no committee can then meet unless there's agreement. And so the majority leader today requested that that unanimous consent be granted, just like almost every other day in the United States Senate. But what was different today was objection was raised by the minority whip. And apparently the explanation is the firing of the director of the FBI last night. Now, how the Senate is functioning or not functioning seems to me to be unrelated to what transpired last night related to the director of the FBI. And so in this place that we're trying to do the people's work and to make decisions and to do good for America, the spillover over partisan politics, the spillover about playing a political game, highlighting a point, has now caused the United States Senate to not be able to conduct hearings today. And in fact, the minority members, apparently, of the United States Senate were instructed, requested on their own volition, something all left the hearings that were already being conducted this morning in protest over what transpired last night. I'm of the view that this is a diverse country. I'm of the view that people in the United States Senate represent folks from across the country, different philosophies, different political parties, different people, different backgrounds. We all bring to the United States Senate a set of characteristics that are different one from another. But I have great regard and respect for every United States Senator's point of view. And I would say that every senator ought to have the ability to express their views on behalf of their constituents, but we can only do that if we allow the Senate to function. I was on the Senate floor not long ago praising the fact that we finally were successful in the appropriations process, that we passed FY17 appropriation bill. For too long, the appropriations process has been broken down and we have conducted business in the United States uh, by a continuing resolution. I thought we were back on a path in which there was enough agreement, respect among members, enough setting aside of partisan differences to actually accomplish legislation. I was pleased that we did that, but today we fall back into the pattern when something happens, we want to make a political point, we then obstruct the ability of others in the United States Senate to conduct their work, to express their opinion, to gather the information that they need. This came to my attention, what transpired today, because this afternoon at 2.30 was scheduled a hearing by the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. That hearing has absolutely nothing to do with the FBI. We have the new Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs scheduled to testify about the Department's plan for a new program, a, a modifications to a program called CHOICE that is so important to me and to my constituents, to the veterans of Kansas, that I was so pleased the hearing had been scheduled and looking so forward to questioning and having a conversation with the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs about how do we make this system of CHOICE work for veterans who live in Kansas from the rural side of our state to the suburban and urban side of our state. 
But because of a peak of anger, a political posturing, a partisanship, the hearing is apparently no longer able to take place. The hearings this morning in which could only last for an hour and a half and for which I guess the minority members walked out seem to me, at least they sound like things that would be very important for us to pursue. The Armed Services Committee, Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities was to have a closed briefing this morning. The Homeland Security was to examine cyber threats facing America, focusing on an overview of cyber threat landscape. The list is significant in the things that we ought to be paying attention to, and yet because of a, an objection, those hearings will not take place or were shortened or were disrupted by only one party participation. I'm not here trying to create further partisanship between Republicans and Democrats. I'm here trying to remind ourselves that there is, a, there is value in allowing cooperation between the minority and majority, not for our own benefits, but for the benefit of the country and the citizens that we represent. Everything does not have to be partisan. Everything does not have to be political. And today we see the Senate sliding back into the habit of making things that we have really nothing to do with, weren't the cause of, taking place apparently to make a political point and perhaps to score votes or support in a political way. We ought to all as United States Senators respect the opinions and values, the positions of others but we do that in a setting in which we all come together, not in which we cancel meetings as a result of a political statement. Mr. President, I appreciate the opportunity to express my concerns about what's transpired, to ask for us to go back to the time in which we work together on a daily basis, and we don't use an excuse to shut down the committee hearing process. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.